people's kids. How was your Easter? I saw photos of so many of you doing the cross art we had up on our blog. For those of you that didn't get a chance to do it, you put a piece of tape, the shape of a cross on a sheet of paper, color the whole page or paint it, and when you remove the tape, you see the outline of the cross. You guys did an amazing job. I also heard of kids who made decisions to follow Jesus last weekend. I want to celebrate you and know that I'm praying for each one of you. All right, right now, I want you to turn to someone in your family and ask them, what was your favorite Easter candy or treat? Now, turn to someone else in your family and ask them, what was your favorite part of the Easter weekend? I know we've been spending every single day with our families, and sometimes that can be hard, but asking each other questions, just like we did, can really help us love one another well. All right, who's ready to help me with the vision? You guys ready? Get rocked, get real, and give it away. Okay, can you guys say it one more time? Moms and dads, I wanna hear you too. You ready? We're gonna get rocked, get real, and give it away. My prayer is that even while you're at home, you are getting rocked by God, getting real with your family, and getting creative on ways to give it away. We're gonna jump into some worship now. Below are a few worship song options for you and your family. You can pause this video now or worship after we get done. Amen. I am loving the living room worship time. Last weekend, we celebrated Easter. Can you turn to someone in your family and tell them what happened on Easter? Yes, Jesus died on a cross for our sins, and three days later, he rose from the dead. So what happened after Easter? Last week, we saw that Jesus had to die. It was the only way that we could be with God. It was the only way to bridge the gap. But then what happened next? That's what we're going to talk about today. Jesus went and hung out with his disciples, his friends, the people that he loved so much. One of the last things Jesus told his disciples before he went to heaven was this, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And that's in Matthew 28, 19 through 20. So that's our memory verse for this week. And I want you to make up hand motions for that. All right, can we all say it together? Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. So I want you to memorize this verse this week. I would love to see a video of you saying your memory verse with hand motions. You can have your mom or dad post it on social media and tag All People's Church, or just email it to me. All right, now check out this video to hear more of the story. Stories of the Bible. God is with us. This is Jesus. hey -o. Jesus is the Savior of the world and the Son of God. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms 
and even raised people from the dead. Uh, wahoo! But some people did not like what Jesus was doing. And they put him to death. He died on a cross and was buried in a tomb. For three days, Jesus' body laid in that tomb, and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body, found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Ah! For he was risen, he was alive. Woohoo! Huh? Hey -o. Ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. <laughs> he taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. Jesus told his disciples that he did all the things that God had told everyone that he would do, and the disciples understood what he was saying. Yep, that makes sense. He told them that he would send the Holy Spirit, just as God had promised to be their helper. Sounds good. After Jesus had spent 40 days with the disciples and appeared to many people, hey, that's it. he led the disciples to a place called Bethany. Jesus blessed the disciples and told them to go out and tell the whole world about him and the good news of forgiveness and make disciples of them. Then he said, be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Then Jesus was taken into heaven to sit at the right hand of God. Not long after that, the Holy Spirit did come to the disciples to be their helper. The disciples knew that God would truly be with them always, and the Holy Spirit is still with us today, for Jesus promised that he would be with us to the end of the age, and he is. So what happened after Jesus rose from the dead? The disciples got to see him, spend time with him. He told them to go and make disciples, baptize them, and teach them all of his commands. So what is a disciple? Do you guys know what that word means? A disciple is a follower of Jesus. He wants us to tell people about Jesus. He also told them to wait for the Holy Spirit to come. We're gonna talk about that next week. And then he went to heaven. Okay, so what does all of this mean for each of us? For me, for you, for your mom and dad? If you guys remember, we talked about this a little last week. So first, I want to ask you, have you decided to follow Jesus? If so, have you been baptized? Are you learning about his commands and all the things he tells us to do? Second, who can you tell about Jesus and who can you pray for? One way we can love people and obey God is to pray for them especially during this time that we can't see people as often as we'd like. I have an activity sheet for you to fill out. It has two questions on it. One, who can you tell about Jesus? And two, who can you pray for? You can write or draw a picture or both. Fill out this sheet this week and I have a prayer activity I want you to do with your family. Do-it-yourself prayer sticks. First, you will think of who and what to pray for, and you will write it down on popsicle sticks. Gather your family and you can brainstorm what to pray for. So you can think of names of people, miracles that you're hoping for, names of cities, nations, whatever and whoever you and your family want to pray for. Write them down on popsicle sticks. Put them in a jar or a cup. Put that jar somewhere where you can pray as a family. Maybe during family devotionals, maybe during a meal like breakfast or dinner. Have everyone pull one or two names and pray out loud for that prayer request. 
We can talk to God like we're talking to a friend. He loves to hear everything you have to say. The little things that are happening in your life, the big things, things that you're concerned about, things that you're hoping for, people that you're praying for. He loves when you come to him. Will you guys pray with me right now? Will you close your eyes, fold your hands? Jesus, thank you that we get to come to you as a friend. Thank you that you died on the cross for us so that we can now have a relationship with you, that we can talk to you and be with you. Jesus, I pray that we would all learn more and more about how to just be your friend and how to come to you with all of our needs, all of our desires, and all of our thoughts. We love you so much, Jesus. Amen. Again, you can go to God and talk to him anytime, any day. He loves when you come to him. All right, so that's all we have for this week. So make sure to look at our blog for all of our resources. Remember, we have our do-it-yourself prayer sticks and check out a prayer map of the world for kids. I'd love to see you saying your memory verse with motions, so make sure to take a video. And parents, we are praying for you during this time. Sarah Bianchi made a couple videos that will hopefully be a resource for you and your family while you're at home with your kids. Love you all lots. I'm praying for you. Have a great week. Bye.